Congresswoman Cori Bush, SLDC and community leaders to kick off 314 Day in the North Point neighborhood. I also would like to acknowledge Alderwoman Pam Boyd. She was here. She's handling some business over there. <laughs> and I also want to recognize uh, Nicole Taylor, who is the owner of this fine establishment. Actually, we just found out earlier she owns the whole block. <laughs> to thank her for hosting us today. Uh, in 2017, she opened her home health care business a couple of doors down, and in 2021, she took over this space and converted it into an adult daycare with the help of volunteers. So fourth generation adult daycare is one of the 800 recipients of our city's $5,000 small business grant fund to help fully open the doors to welcome clients. She used these funds as startup costs and payroll to support opening her daycare business and meet demand. And it's a, not, a, not a secret, but I grew up not too far from here um, on Summit Place in West Florissant. And that's where my dad and mom bought their first home in 1979. And my dad is here today, too. I'm sorry, I got to give him a <laughs> I loved that house. I thought it was the biggest house I'd ever seen. It sat up on a hill. It was it was white. It had this really wonderful, like white um, concrete barrier around it, around the and the on the bottom. And there were 18 steps from the curb to the front door. <laughs> and there was a huge backyard where I used to play with my friends outside. And I had wonderful memories of growing up in Walnut Park. I used to walk up and down West Florissant all the time to go to school at Herzog or to the Walnut Park Library or to hang out with my friends and family. And my aunt actually just li lived right two, do two blocks down from here. So this is our neighborhood. And while we haven't had much snow this year, one of my favorite memories is building a snowman in the front yard in the great snowstorm of 1983. Remember that, Daddy? Because I used his good clothes to put on my snowman. And I got in trouble. But nowadays, these concerns are almost quaint. Our kids can't play outside until the street lights come on the way we used to, much less make a snowman in our front yards. And don't even get, a, get me started on walking up and down West Florissant alone like my friends and I used to do. Like when my son actually rode his bike for the first time to his friend's house, I followed behind him in my car just to make sure he was safe. And as neighborhoods like Walnut Park, The Ville, or St. Louis Place have been left behind, opportunities have fled south of Del Mar. Poverty has gripped our communities, and our sense of community, you having my back and not me having yours, has been torn apart. Repairing that fabric is what will bring a sense of unity, together, togetherness, and safety back to St. Louis. That's why last year we announced the Economic Justice Action Plan to build up communities and help support entrepreneurs and small businesses like the one we're standing in today. Delivering economic justice for all who live here will make our city more economically competitive while creating change residents can see and feel in their neighborhoods. But this is a team effort and government cannot shoulder this burden alone. When done in collaboration with our philanthropic, civic, and private sector partners, when our visions and actions align, we can truly make a long-lasting difference for generations to come. After all, community-driven dr economic development is not a zero-sum game. A it's a rising tide that lifts all boats. What brings prosperity to Walnut Park creates better opportunities in North Point. When we invest in Dutchtown, the benefits spill over to H Holly Hills, Marine Villa, and, the, and South Hampton. Building up our Project Connect neighborhoods, which are the communities that are surrounding the new NGA West Campus, will strengthen our urban core in downtown. I say it often and I say it again, and especially on 314 Day, we recognize the potential of our entire city because St. Louis cannot succeed together if over half of it is left to fail. And that's why we're excited today to launch the next phase of our plan, the Economic Justice Accelerator, to leverage our public funds for greater gains, two, four, 10, 20, 40 years into the future, 
just as cities across this country have done to begin reversing disinvestment in marginalized communities. My parents, again, moved to that house in 1979 at 5963 Summit Place. <laughs> We've seen a lot of change over the past 40 to 50 years, and creating transformational change won't happen overnight. Economic development takes time and hard work. But from supporting small businesses to creating affordable housing for families, economic justice programs are already improving lives and taking shape making a positive impact in communities like North Point. And today, in coordination with SLDC, we're opening the, we're opening the Neighborhood Transformation Grant Program to get more funding on the street. This is a long overdue effort to make change in our city, and I can't think of a better way to celebrate 314 Day. Thank you, and God bless. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Jones. I'm going uh, to have to keep Harper away from my nice clothes when it starts snowing outside. <laughs> um, but also, um, I want to, again, acknowledge uh, much of the hard work of, of Mayor Tashara Jones and through her leadership. But all of this has been made possible, again, through the American Rescue Plan Act. As the mayor calls it, it's a down payment on the future of our city. And this, again, was done in partnership and led under the Biden administration. And we have a strong black woman, congresswoman representing us in Washington, D.C., who's fighting for our city every day to ensure that those who are most marginalized, the communities and the residents who really need these resources, access to capital, access to technical assistance, for them to reach their fullest potential, she fought for that. And now we sit here today seeing dollars being deployed into black-owned businesses such as the one we stand in right now. And this through the hard work of Congresswoman Bush that St. Louis had received over $490 million through the American Rescue Plan. <laughs> so as we move forward, we'd like to leverage your hard work and to ensure that we create the transformational change that you fought for. So with that, I would like to welcome up Congresswoman Bush to speak a few words about the program and how we plan to move things forward in the city. All right, good morning. Good morning. i do something I haven't done, but we can see how this works with these glasses. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, good morning and happy 314 day, everyone. Um, it is the best St. Louis day um, of the year. Thank you to uh, Mayor Jones for inviting me here to speak and to celebrate with all of you today. Uh, thank you to, uh, to Neil Richardson of St. Louis Development Corporation, uh, to Nicole Taylor. You know, uh, it was great meeting you, and we just want to, we want you to know, like, you're doing amazing things for the community. One thing that Nicole said is not only does she, you know, she has this whole plaza, like she owns all of this, but what she's doing with it. And I'll, and the fact that even just upstairs, providing shelter to our um, senior community, to our, our, our elder community, um, from, the, from the kids to, the, uh, to our seniors, that is the work. And so we applaud you for that vision. Um, and again, we wanna uh, acknowledge all the women, Pam Boyd, uh, so, you know, what a better day than today to come together to talk about these great investments and grants focus on strengthening our communities than on 314 Day. As we all know, 314 Day is recognized all across St. Louis as a time when we come together as a community to celebrate the love we all share for our region and emphasize the things that make St. Louis special. For me, 314 Day is a time when I not only reflect on the ways that St. Louis has shaped me into the woman that I am today, but it's also a time when I reflect on all that we have accomplished together while I have the privilege, I've had the privilege of representing us in Congress. Every day as your Congresswoman, I remain committed and focused on doing the work, doing everything in my power to make St. Louis an even better place to live, a better place to work, and a better place to play for everyone. That's why I'm so proud to have worked to pass the American Rescue Plan and to secure, like Neil said, the over $490 million for St. Louis City um, and a total of over 700 for our region, for, um, for Missouri's first district. 
it has been two years since we finally secured this historic American Rescue Plan investment. And we are still seeing the massive and life-changing impact that this funding continues to have on our communities. From the $1,400 stimulus checks to PPP loans for small businesses to funding our schools, child care programs, community health centers, and economic grant opportunities. Like what we're seeing and celebrating here today, this funding is saving and it's improving lives. And that's our work. This funding is what's possible when we have representation at the federal level, representation at the, at the municipal level that simply will not quit until St. Louis gets what we need. That's why I'm proud to have partnered with President Biden and his administration to make sure that the Lou in particular was pri prioritized with these funds. And let me say, that wasn't an easy feat. Nobody just handed us 400 and over $90 million. <laughs> Um, it's because Corey, I spoke to our president directly and made it clear, St. Louis, if nothing else, he knows when he sees me coming, Corey's going to say something about St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> However, we all know that getting the funding is just one piece of the puzzle. We delivered this historic funding to local governments through the American Rescue Plan, and we need strong visionary leadership to make that opportunity and make sure that it helps our communities to soar. We need partners who plan carefully, partners who implement those plans efficiently and equitably because we see what happens when it's not done efficiently and equitably on a whole different level. But ensuring that the people who need the help the most get it first. That's our work. This is why I'm grateful for the partnership and the leadership of our incredible mayor, Tashara Jones. Thank you for all you do and your team um, and everyone who's working so diligent, diligently to ensure that this money gets to the people gets to where it belongs. This is what government working together looks like. Let St. Louis serve as an example of what can be done when lawmakers, stakeholders, and communities work together. We deliver. I am forever proud to be your Congresswoman. I'm proud to be so St. Louis that every single time I step up in Congress, they know St. Louis is in the building. When I step up and I say, St. Louis and I ride. It's actually on the wall of our office. We've been left out. We've been pushed aside. We've been undermined and exploited and counted out for much too long. It's a new day, St. Louis. We won't stop pushing for what's ours because not even the sky is our limit. Let's keep building together. And thank you again to Mayor Jones, to Neil Richardson, and to everyone here for your amazing leadership on this initiative and with all the gratitude in the world for our community. Let me say again, happy 314 day. Thank you, Congresswoman Bush, um, again, for your efforts at the, at the national um, and federal level. So it's very much appreciated. And one thing I've learned uh, day one working under Mayor Tesoro Jones is if we're going to do anything, we want to do it big. And if we're going to do anything, we've got to be ready to work. Um, and roll your sleeves up. It's no just paper pushing around the office. It's actually engaging community, getting money deployed, and supporting residents in the way that they deserve. And when we rolled out the action plan, we stated that it's purposefully called the action plan because we are taking action. We are putting dollars into the streets, into the community. We have, over the last year, supported over 800 businesses deploying $4 million through the Small Business Grant Program. We have recently launched a $14 million housing development fund, supporting redevelopment of for sale housing to 80% AMI households and below in communities that have been historically redlined and underserved, creating a new market of opportunity. We have deployed $1.5 million into our Northside Economic Empowerment Center at Sumner High School. And we talk about 314 Day. You can't talk about 314 Day without talking about Sumner High School because that's the history of our city. Chuck Berry, Tina Turner, Arthur Ashe, all national figures that have come from St. Louis. We must recognize them on 314 Day. We also are deploying $4 million to support the redevelopment of 30% housing, rental housing, for those that are most marginalized and distressed.
and living in poverty. We must not only invest into the housing, but the wraparound services that create economic mobility for them to thrive. And so those are some of the things that we've already done to date. But as we look at the next phase of this work, SLDC, in partnership with our Community Development Administration under the leadership of the Executive Director Noel Pfeffer, we're deploying over $35.5 million of upcoming funding opportunities that will be released over the next month. We have a down payment assistance program that will provide forgivable loan payments to households at 80% at AMI or below to help them create home ownership opportunities for them not to just create some income and opportunity today, but to build generational wealth. We're also supporting our small businesses, providing loans to contractors to help them build capacity by providing bridge loans for cash flow as they navigate the 30, 60, 90, and even longer term for them to receive their payments as they look to scale and grow and employ residents from the city. And we're deepening our relationships with nonprofit organizations to have the closest proximity to the problems that our city faces today. We're creating a $2.5 million small business revolving loan fund in partnership with local nonprofits to get them access to capital, technical assistance, so they can build the capacity of our city. They are the backbone of our city and will continue to allow us to thrive. And once approved, SLDC will roll out the, the request for proposals and qualifications to engage with contractors, with loan funds, with fund managers, with program administrators to ensure that we have the best experts at the table. Because we are creating a new system of how we deploy dollars into marginalized communities. And that requires new partnerships, that requires new investments and new commitments not just from the public sector, but also from the corporate and philanthropic community. And so without further ado, I want to welcome the executive director of CDA, Mr. Noel Pfeffer, to speak about the neighborhood transformation grants that are coming to our city. Thank you. And good morning, everyone. My name is Noel Pfeffer. I serve as executive director of the city's Community Development Administration, which serves as a clearinghouse for federal funds for the city and is charged by Mayor Jones with leveraging these funds to drive economic justice in partnership with SLDC. And thank you, Neil, for your team's partnership as we work to roll out these programs. It's an honor to be here today to announce the launch of the Neighborhood Transformation Grants Program, over $20 million, which we're making available for affordable housing production, for the proactive development of community assets, for neighborhood beautification and capacity building, and for home repair. If this seems like a broad array of uses, that's very much intentional. We know that every neighborhood's needs are different, and so this is a uniquely flexible funding source that's designed to be accessible uh, for neighborhood associations, CDCs, and their for-profit partners. We've applied an equity lens as we work to roll this out, and you can see on your right hand there, uh, an updated economic justice index that incorporates variables ranging from life expectancy and violent crime per capita to educational attainment and internet access as we work to deploy these funds specifically to the communities that need it most and which have been most disproportionately impacted by COVID. It's also worth noting that our priorities here really grow out of community engagement. Back in April, the mayor's office ran a survey that received over 5,000 responses from city residents. And the number one priority that came out of that was neighborhood transformation. And so we're very excited to put these funds to work. At the end of the day, though, this will only work depending on the applications we get. And that's why we really want to hear the community's ideas. What does your park need? What could a vacant building on the corner become? How can we clean up our alleys? Go to stlouis-mo.gov slash cda to learn more and submit your proposals. Thank you. Thank you, Noel. I uh, really appreciate, again, your partnership with SLDC. Um, one of the last programs that we wanted to talk about today was the transformation of our vacant and dilapidated properties. We have over 10,000 uh, properties within our Land Realization Authority, also known as LRA, or St. Louis Land Bank, that is under the city's control. And it's been dilapidated and vacant for far too long. 
And so we are rolling out a new roadmap for redevelopment of our city-owned projects. Projects such as the Wellston Loop, projects such as Cleveland High School, even projects such as the ones that are located within this ward, such as Club Imperial, that hosted concerts by Tina Turner. And restoring our history on 314 Day, we're making a commitment to driving community-driven development forward. So with that, I would like to welcome our director of LRA, a senior vice president of neighborhood transformation, Mr. Lance Knuckles. Well, well, first of all, good morning, everyone, and giving honor to God to actually be here to speak with you today. Uh, it is it's humbling to, to be behind uh, this phenomenal mayor that we have and, and my friend and my boss. Um, but LRA is an asset to this city. The last time I checked, we're not creating new earth. And so as we think about the value of neighborhoods across this city, SODC has identified the opportunities where we have stewardship. And so Neil mentioned that LRA is in stewardship of about 10,000 parcels. And yes, that is my responsibility at this moment in time. And when the mayor spoke about getting to work, Neil gave me two jobs. And so I'm really focused on making the intersection between how we value residents and their perspectives and how we activate parcels to support the work moving forward. And so as we mentioned, we've identified these properties that we really want to get thoughtful and intentional about. And being able to do the work up front. I think historically we have thought about others coming into the city and making investments on our behalf. In this moment, we're going to do the work and start with ourselves. By identifying these parcels and saying, let's get them assessed and understand what is the feasibility of the structure. And then working with partners, we'll launch an RFQ to actually get structures stabilized. Activating ARPA funds and other dollars in our stewardship at SODC to do the first step, to be able to get a safe structure in place and intact for us to then engage community about what is the vision for the possibility of this space or these spaces that we've identified across our demonstration areas. So our ability then to sit with residents and understand what they would like to see and really help our residents in North City begin to dream again. I think dreaming is something that we've lost as adults and I hope that in this process and celebrating 314 Day, we can pause and say, what is the potential future of this great city? And more importantly, how do we lift up the legacy of black and brown people in North St. Louis as we identify these parcels that have connection to people? And after we do that community engagement, we really want to partner with community to then think about what is the reactivation of this project and then make an opportunity for small scale developers not that we don't like big developers, let me be really clear, large scale developers are nice people. But I think the opportunity to engage with developers who are local in a community, who are actually hiring people from the neighborhood in which they're doing projects, is really important for us to really talk about economic growth and vitality and how we support small business in the city. And so our ability to get really thoughtful and intentional about breaking things up in an intentional way to allow projects to have a much more feasible pathway for small developers to partner with us to stabilize these properties, to reactivate and reimagine them, working with consultants to help dream with community, and then activating these projects in partnership with those who are actually doing good work in neighborhoods. So I'm really excited about this roadmap. It gives us a path forward, and it also allows us to rethink LRA. As you all know, we paused LRA for a period of time. We're bringing things forward with new policies and programs, and we're not done yet. Phase one is truth and transparency. Phase two is about how do we activate and collaborate more effectively. Effectively, So I'm really excited about the work that we're able to do and look forward to us and to SODC partnering with CDA and the mayor's office to really execute in a way that's going to be thoughtful for residents to see change and not just hear it, but see it as they walk down their corridor. So thank you all for the opportunity, and I'll turn it back over to my boss and CEO. Thanks, Lance. Lance, again, I really appreciate um, your partnership and your leadership um, under the new, the new imagined LRA. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so as the mayor spoke to um, earlier, we are launching the Economic Justice Accelerator. This is a commitment, not just from Mayor Tashara O. Jones, but also the corporate and philanthropic community coming together towards economic justice neighborhood transformation, 
and ensuring that we are creating a city that works for everyone. And it's not just through 2026 when the ARPA dollars are required to be deployed, but it's about the generations of impact that we will drive forward and the change that we will create for the future of this city. Today, we are proud to announce our first investor into the Economic Justice Accelerator. MasterCard came to SLDC when they learned about the Northside Economic Empowerment Center and the work that we're doing to drive growth for small and minority-owned and women-owned businesses and enterprises. It aligned with their, their goals and priorities around global inclusive growth. St. Louis is in the middle of partnering with organizations and corporations that are talking about global inclusive growth. Let that sit for a second. 314 Day, MasterCard, a corporation that has a global presence, has chosen St. Louis to invest a million dollars to support our economic justice priorities and efforts because we have a plan and we're going to put it in action. And so I would like to welcome Deanne Donahue, the Vice President of MasterCard Investment, to the podium. Thank you, Neil, and good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, so happy 314 Day. My dad grew up three blocks from here. I am a St. Louis native. Um, I grew up here. I still call this city home, and I get to work for a corporation like MasterCard. And it is such an honor to be here today and to be part of today's important announcement and to continue to support the Economic Justice Action Plan, as Neil mentioned. At MasterCard, we are thrilled to play a role in the launch of the Economic Justice Accelerator, especially because we all know and recognize how crucially important small businesses are to their communities. They are truly fundamental to the fabric of our cities. We also know that small businesses in the U.S., especially right here in St. Louis, are still facing numerous challenges. They are continuing to wrestle with the effects of the pandemic, supply chain disruptions, staffing strains, economic volatility, sustained inflation, and more. And for women and minority-owned businesses, the challenges are compounded by exclusionary and antiquated practices. So at MasterCard, small businesses are at the core of what we do and who we are. And we are so excited to be able to announce that we are donating $1 million to jumpstart the accelerator. This is through the MasterCard Impact Fund, as well as support from our Center for Inclusive Growth. The grant itself will focus on supporting small business programming at the Northside Economic Empowerment Center, specifically looking at technical assistance, mentorship, access to capital for minority and women-owned businesses, as well as workforce development services. Today's announcement builds on MasterCard's ongoing commitment to St. Louis-based businesses and last year's launch of our Digital Doors STL, um, which is our online platform that helps small business um, owners as well as St. Louis entrepreneurs by providing them with always-on content and resources to help their businesses grow. Tackling inequalities through innovation is not new to MasterCard. We also continue to invest in St. Louis through our In Solidarity Initiative, which is a $500 million commitment that we have made to help close the racial wealth and opportunity gap for black communities across America. It is through this initiative that right here in St. Louis, we've been able to implement programming um, that has focused on supporting minority-led businesses. One thing we have learned through working with cities like St. Louis is that fostering inclusive economic growth does not happen overnight. It arises from meaningful, long-term, and close-knit partnerships like this one. This work is more important now than ever as we collectively drive towards sustained economic development. I want to thank Mayor Jones, Neil, and his team at SLDC for their partnership, as well as the St. Louis Community Foundation who for their leadership in this next phase. Thank you. Thank you again, um, Deanne, for those kind words and your commitment to economic justice. I do want to take a moment to recognize a few folks um, that are in attendance today. 
that have helped us establish and create the foundation for the economic justice accelerator. As you all have seen the revitalization and rebirth of cities such as Detroit and Charlotte and Chicago, we see that across those cities, economic development, economic justice is a team sport. It requires private, public, and philanthropic partners to be at the table and having intentional and bold conversations around how do we rebuild our city. I would like to thank Accelerator for America, uh, their CEO, Mary Ellen, uh, for coming and being a participant with us. Accelerator for America has led similar partnerships across other cities, and they've come to St. Louis to provide and lend their expertise to support us. I would like to also recognize Elizabeth George as well as Amelia Bond with the St. Louis Community Foundation. They established an economic development and transformation fund to help us pool resources from philanthropic partners across the region and across the country to help accelerate this work forward. As the mayor talked about, this $250 plus million dollar commitment to economic justice is just a down payment. But in order for us to achieve our full potential, it requires all of us working together. And that's why I want to take a moment to also recognize Ms. Kathy Osborne, the head of our Regional Business Council. We also have a commitment from the Regional Business Council and their partners of $1.5 million to the Economic Justice Accelerator to support the advancement of economic justice as well as equitable economic growth in North St. Louis City, South St. Louis City, and also downtown. Because we want to see the entire city thrive. We are the front door to the region. And without all pieces of our city thriving, the region cannot reach its fullest potential. So I want to thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Amelia, Elizabeth, and thank you, Mary Ellen, for your partnership. Because it will allow us to have the capacity to engage with the necessary partners to accelerate this work forward, to get the resources in the hands of the people that need it the most in the most efficient manner, as, as Congresswoman Bush spoke to. So with that, I want to have Mayor Jones close us out on 314 day. I see you at the, uh, the Battle Hawks. Um, con. <laughs> we go, we go salute and, and, and celebrate um, STL SC, our soccer team that's going to go 4 0 for the first time. Our expansion team has went 4 0. We're going to do that. And we want to keep winning on the economic justice front. Again, this is our team and we support each other. And so, with that, I'll pass it over to our amazing leader to sign us off. Great. Thank you, Neil. 314 Day is a day of celebration. It's a, proud, it's a day to be a proud St. Louisan. And today we have much to celebrate about the momentum of, on our Economic Justice Action Plan. And as we celebrate the grants to small businesses, the first affordable housing investments of our plan, the upcoming opportunities for advancing local projects, the $1 million from MasterCard, we ask you to join us in both celebration and the journey, the journey to economic justice. Government cannot and will not do this alone. And only together will we accelerate our work towards a better St. Louis for all. Thank you all and God bless.